that is one I just started. Most of my patients now, I'm, I do TRT and I'm very fortunate that a lot of them have their determinants of health already kind of down. Very rarely do I get a leaky gut guy come in and usually I'm just like, dude, do a bottle of BPC. A lot of times that kind of does it in all honesty. So I don't treat yep. as much dysbiosis as I used to just because I funneled down into mostly guys are coming to me for their hormone and, and not to say that gut stuff won't help. I would say the longer I've been in practice, like you're saying, people want results and you pay me a couple hundred bucks here, there, you know, labs, da, da, da. It's like, dude, you get on your T. It's like, you're going to feel better pretty quick. You know, whereas if we do determinants of health, let's work on your sleep. And, and like I said, a lot of times they kind of already had that in line. So I can ask you about creatine then, because again, this is another area I'm skeptical of. I'm like, man, I'm just going to get my super cheap creatine monohydrate. We were chatting before the podcast that there's a study going around about sleep deprivation. I think it's 20, 25 grams. I do my five to 10 grams a day previously to powder. I actually switched over to gummies just because I switch things up. I do my vitamin D in gummies. But now I have this, this fancy form of creatine. It has all these big words in it, micronized, and then guana, the acid, GGA. So you want to break this down for me and tell me why, why would I want to take this? I remember I was at GNC back in the day where the ethyl ester form came out, the hydrochloride, there's less bloating, da, da, da. But yeah, fill me in. Why, why would I take this instead of my monohydrate? Bioavailability in a word. That would be why. So creatine is technically, technically called methylguanidino acetic acid. That's another synonym for what it is. It's a methylated form of GAA, pre-methylated. So because of that, it's only capable of transporting it in from circulation, from digestion intracellularly through what's called the CT1 or the creatine transporter. Okay. Uh, the reason why taking a gummy or taking carbohydrates is beneficial with creatine is that particular transporter is, you know, for better, lack of a better word, facilitated, upregulated by insulin. So that's why, you know, when people used to take creatine with orange juice, for example, that's a better way that will make that transporter work better and you'll get more intracellular, intramuscular creatine, which is fantastic. But if you take the precursor to creatine, the non-methylated guanidino acetic acid, GAA, it works via that creatine transporter primarily, but it also can shuttle through the taurine transporter, the GABA okay. transporter, and all enough to get intracellularly through passive diffusion. So you've got four routes in which GAA can enter the cell. Once it's in this elvo, this is the big nuance point behind why GAA can be damaging if you just do it by itself is it's non-methylated. Creatine is methyl guanidino acetic acid. So you're going to need to provide methyl donors or support methylation with SAMe or B6, B9, B12 yes. to methylate that GAA to become creatine. But, and that's dependent on the guanidino acetic methyl transferase enzyme, which will convert the GAA to intracellular creatine. But because it's intracellularly via four separate transporters, the studies showed that after combining creatine and GAA versus just creatine alone, you ended up with about an 8.4 times greater muscle saturation of creatine and about a four times, uh, 3.9 or four times greater brain white and gray matter saturation of creatine. So this is one of those new era supplements that I believe is very beneficial for human health. And they've been using it actually for a while in livestock feed in pigs to actually get the muscle mass of them supplementing it in their food. So um, if you want to be like those pigs and get more muscle on you, this is a very intelligent way to do it. Yeah. So, and that's why you have the trimethylglycine and I mean, I take a methylated B vitamin, but you're saying not a bad idea to have something help with, with methylation at the end of the day. And so Exactly. Who is not just going to support the methylation, but there's been studies recently on TMG showing it boosts muscle power, endurance, and strength as well. So you get the phosphocreatine stores upregulated with creatine and the GAA, and then the TMG works on that effect. And then the H, the cluster dextrin is simply to just kind of, you know, how we were speaking about the carbs, cluster dextrin will just spike insulin transiently and be if you're working out, used in the workout, but if you're not, then it's just going to help that creatine transporter shuttle the creatine and the GAA across better. So as far as like the end goal, let's increase creatine as much as possible. This blend, I believe, does that better than anything on the market. 